type. In this video, we will introduce the fundamental of acoustic. In general, we can use a solarometer to measure the vibration. Based on the configuration here, various frequency range we can obtain. For example, if we choose the fault configuration, which is connecting the accelerometer with a vibrating body using MANEC. So in this case, the frequency response will be like this. This figure is called the sensitivity deviation versus the frequency, where the measurement is only valid when the sensitivity is constant. So you can see that this is the valid vibration measurement and the maximum vibration it can measure is around 10 kHz. So the frequency range of vibration measurement by using the piezoelectric accelerometer is around 10 kHz. How about the sound and the noise measurement? You can see different type of elements have different frequency range of the sound measurement from 0 up to 160 kilohertz. For human, by using our ears, we can listen the sound from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. So the study of the sound within 20 to 20 kilohertz, which is the auditory field for the human, is called the acoustic. You can see that by using vibration measurement, we can only measure up to 10 kilohertz, which is around here. And you can see that for the sound measurement, it can measure higher frequency range up to 20 kHz. Beyond this frequency range, such as here, which is below 20 Hz, and also here, which is more than 20 kHz, for human, we cannot listen the sound less than 20 Hz and more than 20 kHz. So this is called the infrasound and also the ultrasound respectively. However, this sound can be listened by some animal. For example, infrasound can be listened by elephant and also the ultrasound can be listened by bat and dolphin. In this study, we will only focus on the acoustic. Infrasound and ultrasound both are out of the scope. You must know the difference between sound acoustic versus the noise. So far, we define the sound from 20 Hz up to 20 kHz because this is the frequency range of the sound that can be listened by human. Sound is a mechanical wave that is due to the oscillation of pressure through some medium. So without the medium, you cannot have sound. So we need the medium such as solid, liquid or gas. So this can be the medium for sound to propagate. When you listen to some sound, you actually listen to the change of pressure of the mechanical wave that is propagated through the medium, which is the air in this case. For example, if you play some music, the music will cause the change of pressure in the air. And what you are listening is actually the change of pressure in the air. So without the medium of the air, you cannot listen to the sound. Acoustic is actually study or science of the sound that study the production, transmission, as well as the effect to human, machine, and etc. Lastly, if you don't like a sound, then you can consider that to be a noise because noise is any unwanted sound by the receiver. It's actually subjective for us to define the noise. It purely depends on the person who listens, measuring or analyzing it. For some people, rock music is very really nice and is a beautiful sound. But for the other, this is unwanted sound and they treat it as the noise. So the definition of the noise is depend on the individual person. As long as a person don't like a particular sound, then it's treated as noise. 
Imagine that you are inside a room with a motor and the motor is turning off. No sound is producing by the motor and when you measure the change of the pressure, you can see that the pressure is constant at the atmospheric pressure, which is around 101 kilo Pascal. So this is the pressure versus time figure, where you see the pressure is constant over time if the motor is turning off. If you turn on the motor and you measure the pressure, the pressure will change with respect to the atmospheric pressure. So you see the pressure fluctuating over the time. The fluctuation of the pressure is mainly due to the compression and also the radar fraction. In this case, let the air to be the elastic medium where you can see the elastic medium compress and also radar fraction compress again and so on where you see maximum pressure happen when the compression of the air happen. On the other hand, radar fraction cause the minimum pressure. This cause the fluctuation of the pressure over the space with respect to your atmospheric pressure. So you can find the maximum pressure from the atmospheric pressure to the peak here. And you can find the wavelength in the space where peak 1 and peak 2 happen. So the wavelength is equal to x2 minus x1. The symbol that we use for the wavelength is equal to lambda and the unit is equal to meter. So you can see that in this case, when your motor is turning on in this side and in the space, you have a lot of air particle and the vibration of the motor will cause the vibration of the air particle and when all the air particle compress together it will cause maximum pressure when air particle is separate apart which is called the radar fraction this will cause the minimum pressure so you can see that the compression and radar fraction of the air causing the fluctuation of the pressure over the space. By doing that, the sound produced by the motor can be listened by a guy on the other side. The propagation method of the sound from the motor to the human here is called the longitudinal propagation. In this case, we have a piston that is moving back and forward in the axis of the pipe. So this is the sound source. In this animation, you can see that when the piston is moving back and forward in this direction, it will cause the air particle in the tube, for example at this point here, you can see it's vibrating. So if you look at the overall picture here, the sound wave is propagated from one side to another side. In this case, air is the elastic medium. So you can see that the air particle is vibrate in its equilibrium position. If you zoom in, you will see that the air particle is moving in this direction, which is the same direction with the sound source. Therefore, this is called the longitudinal propagation. It's important for you to know that for sound is propagated in the longitudinal waveform. And you can see that at this particular moment, especially at this location, the density of the air particle is very high. Therefore, when you measure the sound pressure, it has the highest pressure. This is due to the compression of the air particle. On the other hand, if you look at this location, the density of the air particle is lesser. When you measure the corresponding pressure at these three locations, you will see minimum pressure occur at these three 
region. And this is due to the radar fraction. Both compression and the radar fraction cause the fluctuation of the sound pressure, which is delta P. It's very important for you to know that the air particle does not travel from one point to another point due to the sound source movement here. It just vibrates along its own equilibrium position, like this motion. You can see that the sound wave is propagating in this direction by using the longitudinal mechanism. So we listen the sound in terms of the sound pressure due to this mechanism. So it is very important for you to know the sound wave flow to the right hand side here, not the air particle. The speed of the sound wave can be measured by using this formula, which is equal to the wavelength in meter unit divided with the period in second. So the speed is in meter per second. In simple, wavelength is the distance for one cycle. So you can take the distance from peak to peak here and this distance is called the wavelength. And the time taken for this one cycle is called the period. So we have learned sound is propagated in longitudinal wave format where you can see that the wave is moving in this direction. So far we only discussed the 1D cases where you can see the particle is moving and vibrate back and forward while the wave is moving to the right hand side. So this is the direction of the wave. And this is due to the compression and rarefaction of the air particle. In this example, it shows the mechanism of the 2D sound propagation where the speaker is located at the center and the air molecules or the air particles are given in blue color. So if you zoom in to a specific air particle, you can see that the air particle is moving back and forward. So if you look at the sound wave, it's propagating outward from the speaker. So this is the direction for the sound wave, where it's given in this blue arrow. At this particular moment, you can see that compression happen at this location where the air particle is the most and this is called the compression and over here you have the radar faction and you can see that the sound propagate in this direction which is moving outward from the speaker in simple sound is propagate in longitudinal direction where the direction of the wave is same with the movement of the air particle, which is the medium. So if you see the movement of the particle or the medium is same with the movement of the wave, this is called the longitudinal wave propagation. The way sound propagating is different with the vibration and light propagation method. For the vibration case, it's moving in transverse propagation where you can see the vibration particle here is moving up and down while the wave is propagate in different direction. So in this case, we call it to be transverse propagation. For example, imagine you have a table here where you give impact force to the table at this location. So the vibration of the specific particle here we are moving up and down, like this case, at this position, the particle of the table is moving up and down. But you can see that the vibration wave is propagated through the table in this direction. In this case, you can see that the vibration is moving up and down, while the wave is propagated in the opposite direction to the vibration particle here. Therefore, this is called the transverse wave propagation. Light is propagated in electromagnetic radiation manner where you can see it consists of electric field and also the magnetic field. 
So the electric field is in the red color here, while the magnetic field is in the blue color here. So you can see that the electric field is moving up and down, while the magnetic field is vibrate left and right. So light wave is special because it do not need any medium for propagation. This is the difference between the propagation of the sound versus the vibration and also the light. So in this study, we will only focus on the sound and this is out of the scope. Next, we will discuss the important parameter to represent the sound. First of all, we have the sound wave that is quantify in the pressure versus time where you can measure the maximum pressure RMS of the pressure as well as the average of the pressure by using these three equations. Previously we learned that without the sound source the pressure in a medium will be remain constant to be P atmospheric. If there is a sound source for example if you open the speaker then the pressure will fluctuating with respect to the atmospheric pressure. To find the maximum pressure here, you need to take the P at a particular moment minus with the P ATM. So this will give you the maximum pressure. If you put the T axis located at P ATM axis here, then you obtain this graph where this is the maximum pressure. So for example, in this case, you measure it to be 3. You can find the average of the pressure by taking the summation of the pressure difference between the PT and also the PATM by using the integration technique. So there should be DT here and you should divide it with the time so T is the measurement time. Imagine that you continue the measurement up to the desired measurement time. So by taking all the pressure signal within the T measurement time and perform the calculation here, then you can obtain the average pressure. So in this case, you obtain it to be 1.91. Lastly, you can find the RMS pressure by using this formula where you take the summation using the integration technique towards the pressure difference square and divide it with the measurement time. By doing this, you obtain the RMS pressure here to be 2.12. So you can see that we can quantify the amplitude of the pressure change in these three formats. However, which format is more useful when we perform the sound analysis? To answer this, let's examine this scenario. So in this case, you have two waves. Imagine that you have first speaker, speaker 1, that produce the sound in this magnitude. And this is duplicate the same thing here. And for the second wave, it's coming from the second speaker where it has lower amplitude so you can see the same amplitude here but with different phase so if the speaker 1 and speaker 2 turn on simultaneously then you will obtain this value on the other hand if you turn on the speaker 1 and speaker 2 in different time you may obtain different signal like this then you measure the maximum pressure, RMS pressure, and also the average pressure for these two cases and compare both of them. You see the RMS pressure remain constant while the maximum and average pressure fluctuating a lot. This is because the RMS value here measures the energy of the sound wave. Since the energy 1 and energy 2 from the speaker 1, speaker 2 doesn't change in these two cases. Therefore, the total sound energy will be remain the same as well. Based on this result, we can say that the RMS pressure represents the sound energy well compared to the maximum pressure and average pressure. 
because it's independent of time. So if you look at the maximum pressure and average pressure, both of them change a lot if the phase is changing. Therefore, the RMS value for the pressure is very important in many sound analysis. You can see that in most of the sound measurement device, they are actually measuring the RMS pressure. So one of the main reason is because our human ear is corresponding to the RMS pressure value. Therefore, the RMS pressure is the most important amplitude formula for the sound parameter. Previously, we have learned how to obtain the wavelength and the period from the sound pressure curve here, which can be obtained from the peak to peak, which represent one cycle. And the distance you measure for this cycle is equal to lambda, and time taken for this cycle is equal to the period. We can find the frequency of the pressure signal here, which is equal to 1 over period. So this is the formula. And the unit is equal to Hertz. Omega is the frequency in radian per second, which can be obtained by taking 2 pi multiplied with the F. So wavelength, period, and the frequency either is a F in Hertz or Omega in radian per second. So these three items are important sound parameters that you must know. In terms of the frequency, we only focus the frequency range within 20 Hz to 20 kHz. So this region is called the acoustic, which is the study of the sound, based on the human hearing. Beyond this frequency range is called the infrasound or the ultrasound. Both of these are out of the scope in this study. Speed of the sound propagation is also important for the sound parameter. So it can be represented by the symbol C. If the elastic medium is fixed, then C will be equal to a constant. You can measure the speed of sound propagation by using this formula, where the E is equal to the bulk modulus. To understand what is E, you can extend it from the Hooke's law that you understand previously. So we know that K is equal to the spring, where the unit is equal to Newton per meter. So the force is given by the mass here in mg and the force will cause the spring to deform by x. So k is the elastic property that defines the deformation. For example, if you have high value of the k, then it means you need more force in order to deform the length of the spring in meter. Similarly, bulk modulus is an elastic property that determines the compressibility. For example, in this case, the room is filled by the air particle. So A here is the elastic medium for the sound. The original size of the air particle is this. So the bulk modulus for the air particle tells how much force is needed in order to compress the size into this. For 1 meter square, size reduction. If the bulk modulus is higher, then it's more difficult for you to compress a medium. For example, if you want to compress a diamond, so it takes 443 gigapascal. So giga here means times 10 to the power of 9. So this value is much more greater compared to the air. It means it's much more difficult to compress a diamond compared to the air. Based on the magnitude of the bulk modulus here, you can identify which material is much more easy to be compressed or which material is more difficult to be compressed. Rho is equal to the density, which is the material property. In our example, the elastic medium is the air. Therefore, we study the density of the air. At different temperature, you can see we obtain different air density. When the temperature is increasing, you can imagine that the air particle will be far from each other. Therefore, the air density will be 
decreasing. Sound travels through different materials at different speed because it depends on the bulk modulus of the material as well as the density. If the sound is traveled in the air, then we can use this table to find the bulk modulus. So you need to choose for the adiabatic bulk modulus for the air and substitute the value inside the formula. And the air is given by 20 degrees Celsius. Therefore, by refer to the table here, you can find the density to be 1.204. So after you substitute and compute it, you obtain the speed of sound propagation to be 343 meter per second. This means when one is shouting here and another is listened far away from the person who shout. So if the distance is equal to 343 meter between these two person, then it takes one second for the sound to reach to the receiver here. So in this case, the sound medium is the air at 20 degrees Celsius. In specific, we can also compute the speed of sound propagation by using this formula, where this symbol is equal to 1.41, which is the constant that is derived from the adiabatic law. R is the constant of the perfect gauge law for the air, which is equal to 287. And lastly, T is the temperature in the Kelvin unit and previously the temperature is equal to 20 degrees Celsius and if you want to convert to Kelvin, you need to add it with 273. Let's try to find the speed of air at 20 degrees Celsius by using this formula. So you can substitute all the constant inside. The constant for the gamma here is 1.41 multiply with the R which is 287 and multiply with the temperature in the Kelvin unit. So 20 plus 273 you obtain 293. So after you compute it, you should obtain at 20 degrees Celsius the speed of the air is equal to 343 which is same with the previous result. So you can use this formula to compute the speed of the air at different temperature and you should obtain this trend where you see when the temperature is reducing, the speed is reducing as well. This means that during the daytime, the speed travels faster compared to night. As we assume daytime is hot, compared to night because night is cold normally. So far, we have learned three formula to find the speed of sound propagation. From the second and third formula, we know that for a fixed medium such as the air at 20 degrees Celsius, so in this case, the speed will be equal to constant and we compute it around 343 meter per second. Since C is equal to constant, it means that if you change the period, let's say we increase the period, then in this case, the wavelength will be increased as well. So if you reduce the period, then the wavelength will be reduced as well. So we know that period is equal to 1 over F. Once you substitute, you obtain C equal to lambda F. And if you rearrange this, you obtain this equation. To use this formula, it's very important for you to know that the C here, which is the propagating speed of the sound, is a constant if the medium is fixed. For example, in this case, so you see air is the medium. Let's say the temperature for the air is 20 degrees Celsius. So we know that for this case, the speed of the sound propagate in this medium will be equal to 343 meter per second. And this will be constant. So how can we adjust the frequency of the sound wave here? So this can be done by adjust the piston movement here. 
So if you increase the piston movement left and right, so if the speed is increasing, by doing this, more oscillation of the sound wave can be generated. So you have increased the sound frequency by doing that. From the formula, if the frequency is increased, then the wavelength will be decreased because the C is the constant. So in this case, you can imagine that the oscillation of the sound wave increase. So in this case, the period is reducing. So T is equal to 1 over F. Therefore, the frequency will be increased. And if you measure the wavelength, which is peak to peak distance, then you see the wavelength is reducing. Therefore, you should know that if a sound source is moved more rapidly in order to compress the air, higher frequency of the sound can be produced. So the frequency is increased in this case, and lower wavelength will be obtained. Since the C is constant, lambda will be reduced. So you can see that in this chart, when the frequency is increasing, the wavelength here is reducing. Let's find the wavelength of the sound at 20 Hz and 20 kHz. So for a sound that travels in the air with 20 degrees Celsius, previously we compute the speed of the sound to be this value. So you can obtain the wavelength by using this formula. So 343 3 divided by the frequency. So if you substitute F equal to 20 Hz inside, you obtain the lambda equal to 17 meter. If you substitute the F equal to 20 kHz inside, then you obtain the lambda equal to 0 0.017 meter. Since we only can listen to the sound from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, now we success to convert the frequency to the corresponding wavelength. So in the end, now you should know you only can listen to the sound with the wavelength from 0 0.017 meter to 17 meter. More than that or beyond that or less than that, normal human cannot listen to that.